Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters, uh, good friends out there. This is the voice of uh, Professor Peter uh, Bakunta in the United States. Welcome to the uh, Mukul Language Tutor. Today we'll be talking about a very, very uh, simple tense in my mother tongue, which is called Gimekoka. We'll be talking about the what the what grammarians call the preterite. Now the preterite. Uh, as you guys probably know, is what the what grammarians call the, uh, the 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 immediate the recent past in the in the, in, in 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 ordinary discourse. Uh, in the in other languages like French, Spanish, even in the English language, we have this particular tense that enables us to talk about events that happened in the in the recent past in the re not too long ago. Uh, in subsequent subsequent videos, I'll be talking about uh, another tense that uh, describes uh, the past tense. That tense is called uh, is called uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 imperfect tense, which is a tense that discusses uh, the events that happened in the distant past, events that happened uh, on a regular basis. Uh, events that happened uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as part of a habit, if a part of a routine. Now that tense is called the, the imperfect tense or, you know, or the distant past. But today, uh, the dear friends, I would like us to concentrate on, uh, on the preterite, uh, which is the simple past tense uh, in, 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 uh, in my mother tongue. And in, like I said, in other, other, other languages. Now, in my mother tongue, uh, which is a, a pretty, pretty uh, total uh, language, uh, which means that if you play around with your tongue uh, carelessly, you may you may produce sounds that you did not intend to produce. So, I encourage you to uh, to uh, to listen very keenly and to see how we do express the prairie tense uh, uh, in our mother tongue. Now, there's a grammatical particle, um, which I may call a modal, a, a modal verb, a modal verb or an auxiliary verb. Uh, it's a verb that enables speakers of any language to construct more complex tenses, like we have just mentioned the, the preterite, which is what we're talking about today. There is also uh, the imperfect tense. We have uh, the, uh, the the conditional tense, and so on and so forth. Now, the model in in my mother tongue that ena that enables speakers to speak in the past is 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 pronounced not not. Okay, I'm going to give you examples. If uh, say my somebody in my mother tongue wanted to say, "I ate my food." Okay. I ate my food. My people will say mo, no, you forbon. As you can see, the mo is your subject pronoun. The mo is I. If you wanted to translate that into English, it will translate as I. Okay. Now, so if the Bible command says to you, mo no, you forbon, he's simply telling you that he has eaten his food already. Okay. Regardless of the context. So, mo no, you forbon. Is literally uh, translated into English as I I ate my food. Okay, I ate my food. As you can see, good friends, the, the word, the, the, the grammatical particle, not, is what we call in English grammar or in most other grammars, the, the helping verb or the, the, the modal. Modal verbs in every any language that you can think about. Uh, you know, um, help speakers to construct more complex tenses like the past tense, the, the preterite tense that we're talking about right now. So that was the first example. The first example is fubble is uh, food, okay? Uh, my people like to eat uh, fufu, fufu, uh, fufu, which is uh, which is called baka in my mother tongue. So if you wanted to say in, in, uh, in uh, my mother tongue, uh, I have eaten my, my fufu, you would say you bacon, okay, which is fufu, bacon. I'm going to proceed, good friends, and uh, 
uh, provide you with more examples uh, in my mother tongue that will enable you to uh, to speak in the past tense. The second example that I would like to give, you could change the subject pronoun in, instead of saying mo, which is I, you can change it to plural, you make it plural. You can say, we have we ate our food, for example. You, so you could change the subject pronoun. I think we're going to talk about uh, subject pronouns and, and, and pronouns in the, in the future. But for today, let's concentrate on grammar. So in the, instead of saying, I ate my food, you can decide to say, we ate our food. And that will be, but not you for ba, you know, but not you for ba. So the ba, as you hear that, is, is translates the English we. And you can see, you can see the no, the no stays there, but no, the no stays there, which is your, which is your simple past, which is the, the, the model or the uh, helping verb that it help, enables you to construct, to speak in the past in my mother tongue. So my, but not you for but, my people speak very rapidly, but not you for but, you know, but not you for but, like that rapidly. And you need to be able to catch what is the subject, what is the verb, what is the direct object, what is the indirect object. In this particular sentence that I've given you, there are only three, it's a simple sentence. There are only three uh, components. Subject is ba, you, ba, sorry, uh, ba, no, you is your verb, which is a compounded verb. For ba is your food, your food, which is SVO, what is called, grammarians call the subject verb, uh, uh, you know, sentence structure, sentence structure. Okay. So that was the second example, uh, good friends. And um, and you can actually even make that a question by saying, for example, and not you for me. Have you eaten your food? You're talking to one person, maybe somebody with whom you're familiar. Uh, and not you for me. And not you for me. You see, the R there is you. Okay, it's the you. In this particular case, it will be a singular person. You're asking one person. Have you eat? Did you eat your food? And not you for me. And not you for me. Once again, good friends, you're hearing the not coming in there, which is your helping verb or the model that enables my people to speak in the past tense. Now, if you wanted to go from the singular you, uh, I speak other languages. I speak many other languages, like the French. They have a singular you, and they have the plural you. They have the the uh, the uh, the uh, the colloquial you and they have the formal you. In this particular case of my mother tongue here in Game of Cocker, you if you if you say to somebody, I'm not you for me, you're talking to one person, maybe somebody whom you know, somebody whom you whom you're on friendly terms, somebody whom uh, you, you're friendly with, and so you're addressing the black person as you singular and you familiar. Now, supposing you are talking to a group of people, maybe one, two, three, four, five. I mean, sorry, not one, it can be one and plural. Two, three, four, five people. You will say, "Be, be not you for be man. Be not you for be man. Be not you for be man." Again, once again, good friends, you are hearing the not in in the construction. So again, I want to underscore because this is how you build this language gradually until you get to a level where you master the language perfectly and you can speak without hesitating. Now, the not is the I said I said again is the auxiliary verb. That enables you to to kind of come up with a with a predatory because the you is is past tense, but you need a helping verb there. Not and not you may once you say and not you may did anybody listening to you who is uh, somebody who speaks my mother tongue game cock will know that you were speaking in the past. If I if I did not want to put no, I would say you for which is simply uh, you know the, the you know an imperative is an order it's an imperative mode. Or I, you can, I can say my 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 you my you know that type of thing. It will be present tense. But if I say I'm not you for me, you are actually speaking in the past tense. Now, if you wanted to make it plural to many people, and you're asking them if they've eaten their food, you will say something like be not you for be man, which is plural. You folks, one, two, three, four, more than one person, you'll be saying be not you for be man. So. As you can see, uh, good friends, uh, this language is uh, is pretty interesting. It's be, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, as you can see, if you wanted to say, for example, he or she ate their food, uh, you would say, oh, oh, no, you for me. The oh is he. And it can also be she. If you say, 
And it can also even be an animal. If you will say a, a woman has has eaten her food, you will say, oh, no, are you for me? If you wanted to say a man has eaten his uh, or ate his food, you will say, oh, no, are you for me? Which simply means, still means he ate his food. If you if you had a, a pet, an, a dog, for example, and you gave that food, that pet, that pet some food, and you wanted to tell somebody that 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 the animal has eaten its food, okay, you gonna you're gonna say exactly the same thing. You're gonna say, "Oh no, you for me," but you're referring here now to a to a uh, to an to an animal. So the "oh," as you can see, and we have these things in other languages, for example. I don't want to go into other language here. In French, we have it. We have a what I, what we call the uh, the uh, the neuter, the neuter pronoun that we refer to we, you, it, she, he, and so on and so forth. So this "r" in my mother tongue is pretty similar to the French uh, French uh, neuter pronoun, which I don't want to get into here because it's going to confuse many people. So, and I, I'm sure that other languages have the same type of pronouns that refer to no gender at all. So, um, so. Oh, no, you for me? Again, uh, good friends, is he ate his food. Male. Oh, no, you for me? She ate her food. Female. Oh, no, you for me? It ate its food. Animal. Or something that is not human. Okay? And now you can, uh, dear friends, I want to say that you can change the verb. I realize that I've, I've concentrated so much on the verb uh, uh, you, which is to eat. Now you can you can go you can change the verb and, and come up with another verb nu which is to drink, and you repeat the same thing. For example, you could say um, okay, which means I drank I drank wine. Okay, ndume is wine in my mother tongue, and nu is drink, and no, no, no. You can also say If you say It's also good I think that's I wanted to underscore that too Some some uh, some people in my in my mother tongue Will prefer, instead of saying no They will say I think that's important too That I underscore that Again as you see good friends There is something called accents in languages Somebody from another part of uh, my, my my village will, will say it with a little bit of an accent. Instead of saying no, he will say no. Or but no, which is another verb that means to, to defecate. And that's that's also very complicated too. So it's good to say you, you for you bon, for you bon. Okay. So uh if you said, for example, you are simply saying, I drank wine. Okay, I drank wine if you uh wanted to say to that somebody maybe a singular person uh drank water you're going to say mu you see what i'm saying so the the mu is water and no again whatever you do guys you see that the no is there and no nu mu and no you forget and so on and so forth. You can even change the subject pronoun from I or you to we, for example. And the we in game of is ba, ba, okay? Ba is we. So you can say ba non, ba non nu bia, for example. My people, uh, uh, they have all kinds of words for, for beer or alcoholic drink. They call it, uh, sometimes they call it bia. They, sometimes they call it ndu uh, bikarama, which means the, the wine of the, of, the, of the white people. Of one of the white folks and all that stuff. So, so if if, if a uh, Mukha person says to you, but not nubia or but not nundu karma, they're simply telling you that uh, they drank um, uh, alcohol, which is fabricated in the, uh, in the in the in the industry, as opposed to as opposed to the uh, the, the 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 alcoholic drink that is produced by my people. That we have palm wine, we have uh, raffia wine. That's not what they call ndukarim. Ndukarim is is uh, is wine that has been bottled. Okay, so uh, good friends, you can continue to change the subject pronouns, and each time you change the subject pronoun, I want to underscore this is absolutely important that I do underscore this. The helping verb or the auxiliary or the modal uh, stays the same. Is not 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 not. 
but then you have to play around with the uh with the with the subject and you have have to play around with uh with probably with some other elements of subject you know direct object indirect object but the not stays there which is your your helping verb so good friends i hope that this little this short lesson on the predatory tense in my mother tongue was helpful and that you totally enjoyed it uh in the next lesson i'll be i'll be i'll be probably teaching uh, the other aspect, the other type of uh, past tense in uh, in my mother tongue, which is called the past participle, because the past participle, uh, as uh, opposed to the uh, the preterite, does express tenses that were ongoing in the past. They does they do express uh, the tense does express uh, ongoing activities, something that were done, same th things that were done in you know kind of in, in a habitual manner in the past. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, the video is getting to 16 minutes. I think it's getting too long for some people. So I do thank, want to thank you uh, profoundly from the bottom of my heart for taking time off your very uh, busy schedules to take a look at this video. Please, um, after listening to the video, you want to like it. If you feel like liking it, please like it. And if you have comments, uh, please do not hesitate to leave comments for me to come and check, check them out. And uh, if you have uh, questions, please do not hesitate as well to ask your questions. I want to thank you profoundly and uh, stay, uh, stay blessed and we'll talk next time. Bye-bye.